Hello, lots of people have been asking me about lining paper. When and why should you use it, even on an apparently smooth wall like this? And is it worth it for a really good end finish? Well, let's have a look. So why would you want to use lining paper? Well, the most obvious reason is if your wall's not perfectly flat. Now, our walls are actually quite flat. We had these replastered when we moved in about 15 years ago. There's a few little bits here where we've filled them. We used to have shelves up um, and we've also got these greasy marks, which are from Blue Tack, where I think my son had some posters up. Um, another very good reason for using lining paper, if you're on quite a smooth wall, is that when you put your final wallpaper up, as it dries, it shrinks slightly and you might actually have um, get a small gap where the, the join is. Now, if you have lining paper underneath your wallpaper, it holds it all together and that's not going to happen. So you are going to get a better finish. So if you spent quite a bit of money on your wallpaper, it really is worth doing. So uh, this is the paper we're going to use at the end. Um, this is our Matrice slightly naughty wallpaper. And as you can see, it's beautiful matte paper, black and white. Now, also because it's white and this wall's blue, that's another good reason for us to use lining paper. Um, if we weren't going to use lining paper, I'd recommend painting that white first. So this is a big roll of lining paper I just had left from another job. Um, this is, they come in different grades to lining paper. This is a thousand grade. I think you can get between 800 and 2000. So the higher the number, the thicker the paper. If it's thick paper, it will cover like more cracks and bumps in your wall, and um, it'll be slightly difficult, more difficult to hang. So thousand grade is kind of standard. So when we hang lining paper, we our standard paper is obviously our top paper is going to go vertically. We're actually going to hang our lining paper horizontally across the wall. Now the reason for this is that you don't want any of the joins coinciding. So we're going to work out how much we need and then draw a horizontal line on this wall um, so that we can paper up to that line. So we're going to work out how much of our lining paper we need. Now the natural thing you might think might be to just sort of paper up to the skirting board, along the skirting board or along where the ceiling meets the wall, but chances are that your walls aren't straight. So we're not going to do that, we're going to overlap it a bit and then we can sort of cut into it to make sure it's perfect. So I'm just going to work out how much we need. So we've got I'm going to pull that down slightly into the skirting walls. We've got one, two, this is just very approximate, three, and that will be four. So I'm going to do my first piece of wallpaper. I'm going to draw a line with the spirit level. I mean, it doesn't have to be that accurate. Along here, and my first piece of wallpaper is going to go in the middle of the wall, and then I'm going to paper outwards, and then my last one I'll need to trim at the top. I'm going to cut my wallpaper to be the length of this wall, of the width of this wall, with a little bit extra so we can trim. Right, so I've got my mark that I've made and I've got a spirit level. I mean, you don't have to use a spirit level, um, but I just don't happen to have one handy. Um, and I'm just going to draw a rough line, which is going to be my guide as to where I'm going to put my first piece of paper, which on the paper along here, so it's gonna go here. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna measure the width of this wall. I'm gonna add about 20 centimetres and that's gonna be the length of the piece of paper that I cut. So I'm just going to mix the paste uh, to put the lining paper up. I've decided just to use some standard cold water paste mix, which to be honest is a more sustainable option really than uh, ready mix paste and it's also very cheap. Um, it doesn't use much packaging and you're not uh, using all the fuel to transport a big heavy tub of paste. Plus, um, if you haven't mixed it, it lasts for years. So I've put the correct amount of water into the bucket. Um, I've looked at this, we're just using normal wallpaper, so this needed 6.8 litres. So I've filled up to there. So uh, now it's the really important bit, I'm just going to sprinkle the paste into the water. So what you have to do is stir with one hand and gently sprinkle it in. Um, Keep sprinkling and stirring. So this is 
is the bit that's worth taking some time over. Um, if you just point it on at once, you'd end up with a nutty mix, which would be bad. So we're just going to gently keep pouring it in and stirring at the same time. And here's the paste all done. It's sat for a bit. It's lovely and smooth and thick, no lumps, and it's ready to use. Right, so I've cut my piece of lining paper to size. So I've cut it to the width of this wall plus about 10 or 20 centimetres extra, um, just to give me some extra to trim. And I'm gonna paste this paper. So I've got a pasting table out, or you could use an old garden table or just a table with a, a sheet on it or something. So I'm going to start to paste this. And this is like um, more kind of old fashioned, um, it's, not, it's not paste the wall paper, so it needs to soak. So I'm gonna put the paste on. If you just kind of move the edge of the paper so it's just over the pasting table, your pasting table doesn't get too dirty. Right, so that we can handle this and um, so it can soak a bit, we're just going to fold this into itself like that, move it along, paste my next bit. right to the edges, plenty of paste. Uh, right, so for the next bit, I'm going to take it to my fingers like this, move it up and do that. So you can see, we're creating this concertina effect. So I'll continue with that. I mean, this this piece isn't too long actually, because this is a small room. It could end up with, with quite a large piece of, um, Quite a long piece of wallpaper to fold up. So let's finish this off. There we go, all pasted. Right, now I'm ready to put my piece of paper up. So it's just been soaking for a few minutes really while I've just got myself together. So um, hopefully this is going to be the right size. It's an exciting bit. Um, I've got a platform here, so I can easily work from that. And I'm going to line this up with this line that I drew on the wall. So it needs to overlap a little bit into the corner. Oops. And here's my, there we go. Here's my line. So I'm going to put the top edge of my wallpaper against that line. Let's just go right. So, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, after all, this isn't our top top paper. This is just our base coat, so it's good practice. So just stick it all off. Oh, I've got a bit too much extra, never mind. Just cut that off and we'll make our next piece shorter. Stick that, right. So I can smooth this down now. You might have to, if you get a big bubble, you might have to peel it off. I've got a big bubble there. And let the bubble out. So that's but a really important thing is just make sure you've got enough paste on and make sure all your edges are really well stuck so you don't want any of them flapping about. But I mean remember this is just this gonna be underneath your wallpaper so if this was your top paper you'd have to be very careful. You wouldn't want to get too much paste on the surface you'd have to be much more careful than I'm being with this. So this is really quite a quick job and it's quite satisfying. Oops, I've got a bit of a crease in there. So that's oh, it's a bit long. So, there we go. Perfect. So, I think I'm just gonna put a little bit more paste on a couple of these edges. I can just pull them up, put a bit more on with a little brush, and then that piece is done.
So now we're ready to trim these edges. As you can see, I've left far too much excess on this bit. So uh, next time I'm going to cut a shorter piece of wallpaper. So um, as I said, this is not super critical because this is just our lining paper. Um, so you don't have to worry too much. It's good practice. So I've just got a sharp knife and I'm just going to cut into the corner. Now, if you're struggling to cut, um, you're not getting a very clean edge, which to be honest, this isn't. You might It might be just because your paper's a little bit uh, wet. So you could come back when it's just dried off slightly. Now, this certainly isn't perfect, um, but it's fine for what we need it for because this is just going under our paper. So, right, so look, just take that off. Oops, oh dear. It's a bit, a bit raggedy. I could have done with a sharper knife myself. Let's just. So yeah, definitely the, not the best cut I've ever made, but you know what, that, that is going to be fine. It doesn't matter. What you just want to make sure is it's, you're cutting it just a couple of millimetres short of this corner because we don't want an overlap because that's going to create a ridge. So it doesn't matter too much if it's a little bit bumpy as long as it's not overlapping over into that corner. So that's done now, that's our first piece up. So I've got the second piece of lining paper up and you might notice that there's an extremely small gap which I've left on purpose between the two pieces. So this is, um, you know, it's less than a millimetre and that is just to ensure that the paper definitely doesn't overlap, um, doesn't expand and leave an overlap um, and cause a sort of ridge um, when we put the top layer of uh, proper paper on. So you wouldn't do that if you were going to um, just paint this lining paper rather than paper over it. You just uh, put the two seams together. Right, so now I'm going to put a piece of paper up uh, that's nearest the ceiling. So that's one that we're going to have to trim. So let's see, this could be a bit tricky. So, oops, let's line up with this. So we're leaving this, uh, we're going to get it on. We've got to remember to leave this narrow gap. That's a good, good amount. So the good thing about this is once you've got it, you just get it up. It's quite forgiving and you can slide it. This paper's very slidey, the paste rather. So I'm just going to roughly stick the wall and then move it about. and try and move the rest of this down. I just need to get my brush. So I'm just sliding this into position so I get this very small gap, maybe less than a millimetre, but what I really don't want it to do is to overlap here because that will cause a ridge when we put our final wallpaper on. So it's got quite a lot of flexibility into it. Take that off, move it a bit. And slide it into place. There we go. This cap's a bit big so I can just slide it. Well, I think that's looking better now. Right into the corners. Top. Perfect. And once I've got this stuck on, I'm happy and I'm happy with the positioning. I'll start trimming. So yet again, I've got far too much overhang, so I'm just going to tr roughly trim that off. So now let's just keep that gap there. So now it's quite obvious we're going to just 
maybe start with the sides and can cut the corners in. So I've got my knife and something to cut against. You could use a ruler, anything really. Um, like I said, this is not too critical because it's just the lining paper. So. Start by cutting this piece up here. So, I mean, it's left a bit of a raggedy edge because I really should have started with a better knife, um, which I'm left at work. But that's going to be fine because this is going to be hidden. So I'm just going to. That like that. So that's looking good in there. So we do our top edge so we can sort of fold that into you know, fold that into the ceiling to get our top edge here. Remember we don't want to if anything, it's best to be a bit short because we're gonna paper put our top paper over. So you could either pull this over and use a knife like this, or you could even create a crease and cut it with scissors because it's not so critical, it's the lining paper. I think um, because my knife leaves, because my knife leaves a little bit to be desired, I'm going to crease this and then cut it with my scissors, which are a bit better. So I've got Quite a good crease there. So I can just lift that away from the wall. And just carefully cut along where I've got the crease. Maybe that's a bit, I don't cut a little bit more off there. So, and then you can wipe the paste off the ceiling with a, just with a damp cloth once you've finished. So, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's a bit short of the ceiling, that's the main thing. So there we go, that's how we trim our edges. So we've just completed the lining paper on three of the walls. But the final wall left to do is the tricky one. So, we're onto our fourth wall, which as you can see, has got a window with a pearl meter above it, a radiator and a socket. So this is going to be a bit of a tricky one. Because it's quite easy for us to do so, we're going to remove the pearl uh, If you've got a curtain pole, it would be a good idea to remove that if you can too. We're not going to take the radiator off. Um, I'm a bit worried about doing that um, as it's quite old. So we're going to show you how, to, how best to paper around this tricky wall. So we've taken the pearl down and we're just going to work out where we're going to put our pieces of horizontal paper. So I think the best way to tackle this is to have, to make sure that our paper, we get one piece of paper that takes in this width here and it comes to about the height of the brackets behind the, wall, behind the radiator. So if I start this piece of wallpaper about here, then I'm going to have one there Taking the socket, one there, one there, and then I'm going to have this whole piece here, which is going to take the top of the window in. So I'm going to draw my line here, and I think I'm going to start with this piece first. So I've drawn our line on the wall, and I'm going to put our first piece of paper on this line, which is also going to cover this crack, so that's good. So here's my piece of paper. place. Right now I'm hoping that this is going to be able to go down the back of the radiator. Might be, I mean, as I keep saying this is just lining paper so you don't have to worry too much about manhandling it. 
So let's see if we can coax it down the back. It will, it will take you a couple of goes to get this on, but don't worry about that. It doesn't matter if your paper gets a little bit creased. Also, it should really matter in the lining paper if it's not perfectly straight to the line. Brush. Now, so we've got some, just about this, got this okay behind the radiator. So that's good. But there's windowsill protruding here, so now how are we going to tackle that? I'm going to cut this end, cut this end off first. Now, because this is wrapping around the windowsill, I'm going to try cut this straight down here so that I've got enough of this to wrap around there. So I'm just going to put this down here. So I'm just going to carefully cut the one here, which we sort of so this now to get around this window so that we can kind of cut diagonally. There we go, so we can really ease that in there. Get my brush again. A bit of crease in that. Brush that out. Yeah, that's looking better. And then we can cut this around here. So I'm going to need some extra paste on these bits. Um, and then we can cut cut this in here so that's our first piece on and as you can see that's going to look good going behind the radiator so our next piece is we can just tuck them in as far as we, they can go behind the radiator. Now I'm going to do this piece that goes it's just half a piece that goes behind this radiator and we've also got this socket. So I've turned the electricity off. Um, I can just turn the upstairs sockets off in this house. Um, I'm just going to loosen the socket. I'm not going to take these screws completely out. I just want to be able to pull this plate slightly forward. This one's already loose. There we go. So I've just pulled it forward slightly. Um, with the electricity off, obviously, because we, we've got wet wallpaper paste. So I've got my piece cut approximately to size. I'm going to swap that. A bit tricky because it's sticky. So pull it down here so it lines up. Slot it to the radiator up to the bracket so as far in as I can get it. I'm going to line it up with that line. So we've got our sort of one millimetre gap there, and slide it into place. Right, so that's gone on nicely. So now we're going to tackle the socket. Right, so you can feel the socket here. So we've got the corners of the socket. What we're going to do is we're going to cut, make an incision in the middle of the socket and then cut across to the corners. So if I just, there we go, just make a hole, I, I can feel that corner of that socket through there, so I'm going to go diagonally to that one, diagonally to that one, diagonally to that corner, and the final corner I can see is there. Right, so now you can start to see that socket coming through. So I'm just going to trim these edges off a bit.
So you can always trim more off, obviously, as you go along. So what we're going to do is we want to get this socket to come out like that. Now smooth the paper around it. We basically we want to get these little flaps maybe we can cut i think i'm going to cut these flaps down slightly so that we can just push them behind the socket so just going to slightly trim that off Slightly more. Well, obviously, I've turned the electricity off here. So, if you can see, we can just push that paper. It's got to be a bit gentle because the paper's damp, so it's easy to rip. Um, so, we're just going to shove that behind the socket. Probably better implements to use for this than a screwdriver, to be honest. But that's what I've got to hand at the moment. So, once I've got all that done, I'm going to smooth. You can see, you can see it's starting to look good. I can smooth all this round. I mean, I'm not going to screw this back in because I'm going to do the, the top wallpaper. And then, as before, we can just trim this excess and then that'll be that piece done. So here's our finished socket. Um, I've not screwed it in yet because um, I'm going to be doing my top wallpaper. When you screw it in, just make sure it's straight. But you can see it's looking pretty good. So nearly finished the room. I've got the last piece, which is above this uh, curtain rail. So um, I've taken the pelmet down from here. So, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's not too neat because actually the pelmet and the curtains are going to cover some of this. So let's go. We've got a piece of paper that's the full width. It's actually slightly short to the ceiling. It's not really ideal, in mind. So I'm gonna to to put this whole piece on, roughly. Up here, so nice slidey paper. Oops. So we've got our one millimeter or less gap. Okay, that's good. Right now, um, I've decided I'm going to go around this part of the window in here, so I'm going to cut up here, just check this piece of paper is actually straight, a bit here, and then I'm going to cut the edge of the window, and then for this I'm going to cut, make an incision along the curtain rail, like that so that we can just and then a little diagonal snip so that we can just sort of form that paper around here like i said it doesn't have to be super neat because this is in this case this is going to be covered by a helmet snip into this corner here there we go so Right. 
so you can just cut around these places. I mean, if you've got a curtain hole and you've taken it down, it should be quite easy, relatively easy to paper around that. So you can see, and that's it's not super perfect, but I'm going to be able to trim around this um, and do the same on the other side. And it's finished. Look out for our next video on how to wallpaper a whole room with patterned wallpaper. Thank you so much for watching my video. I'm Charlotte Raffo and when I'm not decorating at home, um, my business is The Monkey Puzzle Tree and we collaborate with fine artists to create beautiful wallpapers and fabrics like this real cork wallpaper we have here and these amazing screen printed fabrics got lots of different ones um, which you can see on our website we've won lots of awards for our designs so if you'd like to see more you can subscribe and see more videos and we also have a website and we hold stock of all our products and distribute around the world thank you so much